Are worm castings a fertilizer or is it something even better? We'll get to that on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill and this is the Urban Worm Company. I got an email this week from a fellow worm castings business owner. He had just gotten his worm castings tested because some potential customers were interested in what's called the NPK value of his worm castings. Now NPK is a three digit number that communicates the amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in fertilizer. You'll see numbers like 10, 10, 10, or 13, 10, 10. In the case of solid urea fertilizer, that's something crazy like 4600. Now, if you're subscribed to my channel, you might remember a video I did a while back on whether NPK is a really good measure of quality when it comes to worm castings. Spoiler alert, it's not. So that brings up the question of whether worm castings are a fertilizer. Well, if you're gonna measure the worth of a fertilizer by NPK, then I would argue that worm castings are not fertilizers. When you see NPK listed on worm castings, they typically have very low values along the lines of 100. And the test results I looked at suggested this guy's castings were maybe 111 or 112. So what are worm castings if not a fertilizer? Well, worm castings may not have high levels of macronutrients, but what they do have are billions of microorganisms that can convert existing nutrients in the soil into forms that plants can use. Let's use nitrogen for an example. Plants need nitrogen, but they can't take up nitrogen in organic and form. That nitrogen in the soil needs to be converted into ammonium and nitrate form in order to be used by the plants. And the bacteria present in good worm castings are what help with this conversion. So worm castings and the micro microbes within them act as facilitators more than actual fertilizers. Aside from nutrient cycling, worm castings also provide increased water retention and the worm poop itself provides much needed organic matter to the soil. They can, but not always, have plant growth regulators and plant growth hormones like auxins to assist in growth. Fertilizers cannot do this for your soil. Real quick guys, if you're enjoying this video and want me to make more of them, please like this video, hit subscribe, and click that little bell to let you know every time we release a new video. Now back to the topic. Because worm castings are so low in nutrients, there's no risk of burning your plant roots by adding too much worm castings to your soil. You do run this risk with fertilizer, but adding too much worm castings to your soil can stunt the growth and yield of your plants by contributing to increased salt content, excessive plant growth regulators, and poor drainage if the soil is holding on to too much water. If you're thinking about selling your worm castings, you need to decide now whether you want to call your worm castings a fertilizer or not, because even though they're very low in NPK, you still have the option of calling them a fertilizer. By calling them a fertilizer instead of the more vague term of soil amendment, which is what we do here, you're going to face higher regulatory scrutiny in order to sell your product, and you're going to need to get licensed in multiple states. But if you you jump through enough hoops to call your castings a fertilizer, then it does allow you to sell into the massive fertilizer market. Guys, I've got an insane resource for you to download right now. It's the PDF version of our ultimate guide to vermicomposting, where we cover everything from the basics of vermicomposting, how to start and maintain a worm bin, how to judge quality in worm castings, and the financial opportunities in vermicomposting and more. Just click this little link above my left shoulder and you can sign up to get that guide immediately. All right, that's it. We'll see you on the next video.